Good morning everyone and welcome to Ilkley Baptist Church. On the day that we here in the church have been celebrating our Harvest Festival. Our call to worship. In deep gratitude we come to worship God. We recognise God as the source of all goodness. All good gifts come from the Spirit of God. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, they're all of God. We come today with grateful hearts, not for things, but for who God is. We gather to show our gratitude in song and in prayer. Let's start showing our gratitude by singing our first hymn of praise. Let's sing together, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. It's briefing time, so let's find out what's happening in the life of the church. First of all, I notice that our craft group, which has not met for the last year and a bit, will be resuming this Friday, the 1st of October, at 2pm. That's 2pm here in church for the craft group. Everyone's welcome, and if you're working on anything for the craft group a year ago, bring it in and we'll see if we can get it finished. 2 o'clock this Friday. Uh, just a little bit of advance notice, I'm going off on my holidays for the first time in two years. Uh, Brenda and I are off on holiday to Malta, also on Friday the 1st of October, which means I'm missing two Sundays. The first one I'll be missing totally, as I'm going to the Church of Scotland in Valletta in Malta on that Sunday. The following Sunday I shall be back here, but I won't have had time to prepare a sermon. Thankfully, we have got two very capable preachers filling in. First of all, next Sunday, the first, uh, uh, sorry, the 3rd of October, we have David Duncalf, who's going to be preaching. And on that date, there will also be a fair trade stall in the lounge, the first one of those that we had for over a year. 
And the following week on Sunday the 10th of October, Anne and Kate are going to be again leading our service uh, with the little music group and we'll also be uh, serving communion as part of that worship service. If you're watching a stream service, do not worry, there will still be a stream service both of those weeks. Uh, they will be pre-recorded. I will not be doing the sermon. There will be a recorded sermon um, which has been provided by the Baptist Missionary Society and you will have that and that will actually be on YouTube and accessible on the morning of the worship services. Now one bit of bad news is that we've received information that uh, the real Advent calendar which we've been um, plugging as it were for the last couple of years uh, is not going to be on sale in any of the supermarkets this year. Presumably this is all down to logistical problems. Now I'm going to show you a little video in a minute just what the difference is with a real advent calendar which is also a fair trade calendar by the way. Uh, if you're interested there's an address, a web address on the, the video that you can use to order or you can come along and order one with us. See Gwen at the table uh, next Sunday here at church and we can get some ordered. We have got some ordered but we, we, if we need more than that we can still order more. But please see Gwen or Larry uh, after the church service next week or order online. Anyway, here's a little video that tells you something about the real Advent calendar. Take us into our scripture reading. Let's join together to say the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 to 38. And I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In a short time, we're going to be watching a BMS, Baptist Missionary Society, video about what it's like to be a persecuted Christian. That is the theme of the BMS Harvest Project that we're supporting this year. I will stand. Christians in the UK have experienced a very tiny glimpse of what it's like to be an isolated believer, certainly through the uh, coronavirus pandemic because we've been separated from Christian communities that we've been used to, locked down at home, and we've maybe been unable to gather for worship at all in the last year and a half. So why don't you close your eyes and remember how that felt? How did it feel to be unable to see or to hug your loved ones? How did it feel to be unable to worship publicly? For many of the Christians that BMS supports around the world, this is what it is always like. Keep your eyes closed and imagine that you're sitting in the church, our church, completely alone. Think about what it would be like not to know a single other Christian. How would you grow in your faith? How would you worship? Where would you find the strength to carry on? Now imagine that your family and your closest friends have all turned their backs on you because you follow this man called Jesus. They won't talk to you. You're not welcome in their homes or at any of their celebrations. And you know that for as long as you remain a Christian, they will act as if you just do not exist. Would you continue trusting God? Now that was exactly the situation highlighted in our scripture passage. And it was the difficult decision that a North African believer in the Harvest video that we will watch later has to make. Millions of people worldwide even even in Europe, haven't heard, refuse to hear, or don't understand the word of God. To let us understand even more, let us look at an example, a private message from Ali, a Muslim from North Africa. And this is absolutely true. He sent this uh, message to a BMS supported Christian on Facebook after she had stated what exactly Christians believe. And Ali says, God, Lord or Allah must meet four conditions to deserve to be or to achieve the status of a God. And Ali says the first rule is that God is unique in deity, deism, names and attributes, and no one shares them with him. And he says that you said that this God, Jesus, we must go through to worship God, the Father. Well, there's a pair of gods involved there, a God and his Son, who share this divine inheritance. And Ali contends that since he shares some of his attributes with the rest of humanity, and since deity requires uniqueness, it means that the first understanding of the Lord Jesus has failed, according to him. There's more. The second rule, according to Ali, is that only God can satisfy needs and wants. Ali says, I mean, should I turn to the Lord Jesus, the Son, to satisfy the, my needs or my wants, or to the Lord the Father? As far as I know, the Father is stronger and more durable. I mean, will I abandon the request of the Lord the Father and make my request to the weak Son? So again, Ali contends that the next rule 
has failed again. You can see his logic to a certain extent. His third rule, he has no son and has not had a son, no father, no wife. And according to what I read in the Bible, his mother is the Virgin Mary. I mean, he was born from the womb of a human being. Is a God born? Well, according to Ali's third rule, there is no birth. Thus, he says, the third rule fails and falls. And Ali has got a fourth rule, his final rule. A God is not identical or similar to anyone in his creation. In the Bible, he was like the people in his covenant, eating and walking through towns and markets. Ali says, do you mean that God is a human being? Now back to the present time, we can see that just from one man's understanding or lack of it, that there are many barriers to people understanding, accepting and believing the Christian faith. Many of our own fundamental beliefs make no sense to people from other religious or cultural backgrounds. For Ali, the Christian faith feels completely incompatible with everything he has been taught about God. How often do we take into account the beliefs of those around us and consider how to explain our Christian faith in the light of these things? We are lucky that we have such freedom to live out our faith here in the UK. It's a privilege that many people don't have. The incredible believers that BMS are supporting around the world like those featured in the I Will Stand video that we're just going to watch shortly, believe that Jesus is worth it all. They want to tell others about him and others want to hear. We all want to see that a world where that is possible for everyone. A world where Christian communities are able to flourish and people are free to speak about their faith openly and without fear of persecution in modern day and times or as it was in our scripture passage. The, there are three ways our church and every church can help start creating this world today. First of all, we should pray for these believers. You could also pray for those non-believers that they come to recognise Christ. You can give to the BMS I Will Stand appeal to support Christians living the gospel no matter what the cost is. And our final point, the third point, is you can share these stories to spread the word and encourage more people to pray and to give. If you would like to donate to the BMS Harvest Appeal, you will find a slide at the end of this presentation with details on how you can do that. Or if you're coming to church at all, our church in the next couple of weeks, you can just put in a money in an envelope and it will be donated to the BMS Harvest Appeal. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we are in a safe and secure country. Yes, Lord, we may well be ridiculed or even humiliated for our faith at times, but we're not likely to be executed, imprisoned or beaten. Lord, we will stand with all our fellow Christians in whatever country. Be with them, support them and encourage them as we attempt to encourage our own folk here to stand with them in their struggle to be Christians. Amen. Sometimes when things are going badly, it's very hard to be a Christian, but we need to recognise the love of God. So we're going to sing our next song now, a hymn that you'll probably know. Here is love vast as the ocean. Yeah. 
precious blood Who is love will not remember Who can cease to sing his praise He can never be forgotten Throughout his eternal days On the mount of crucifixion Fountains open deep and wide Through the flood gates of God's mercy Float a vast and Gracious tide, grace and love like mighty rivers poured in sin from above, and his peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world in Truth, thou dost direct me by thy spirit through thy word, and thy grace my need is meeting as I trust in thee, my Lord. Of thy fullness thou art pouring, thy great love and power on me without me. Your full and boundless, drawing out my heart to me. I saw Jesus 2,000 years ago. I was watching a vision. It wasn't like a dream. I was there with them. I saw he had 12 students. I saw him healing people, preaching. I hadn't read the Bible, but I saw it happening. When I woke up from the vision, I went to my neighbor, who I knew was a Christian. I told her my story, and she fell to the ground and couldn't say a word. She gave me a Bible and opened it in Matthew. It was unbelievable. What I read, that is what I had seen. In that moment, something inside me changed. The next two weeks were the best two weeks of my life. I was in a very hard situation, and my situation did not change, but I changed. My life started from that moment. I didn't tell anyone I was a Christian because I was afraid. Two years later, I moved countries. I tried every church, but they refused to baptize me. It's an Islamic country. If you change from Islam to Christianity, it really costs lives. I was learning the Bible by myself and searching for eight years. Then God found me a private teacher. It was a miracle. I learned and I started telling my family. I started with my brother. He accepted Jesus. Then I told my older sister, she accepted Jesus. Most of my family are Christians now. After that, we started this small ministry. We're helping people who are in need. We do work here and in my home country. In my home country, so many people became Christians, like 1,200 people. When the neighbors saw this, they tried to harm these people. But the Christians didn't care, even if it cost them their lives. I don't know exactly what will happen, but I want to serve God. When my mom found out I was a Christian, she said, I bore you in my womb, but I wish I didn't. Choosing to follow Christ was not easy. I'm from a Muslim background, and I saw myself on one side and my parents on the other. 
and I wondered, am I right and they're wrong? I would have rather been wrong and them right. There was no physical violence, but they stopped talking to me. My mom and dad are really dear to me. It was really hard. When my parents stopped talking to me, I was called into full-time ministry. At first, I wanted to have both, my family and the truth. But the truth has set me free, and I cannot not speak it. My ministry is on Facebook, which is really effective for reaching people. I remain anonymous, which gives people more freedom to talk. The people I talk with are Muslims. I understand the people who message with questions because I was once there. I want to learn more, so I may be ready to answer as many questions as possible. I miss my family a lot. I do long for them, but I just don't want to give up Jesus. The Lord has performed a lot of miracles for me. He takes care of me. He answers my questions. The little details, they all add up. And when I think of them all, I can't but give all I have for Him. I made a promise that I would not let any Christians live in my area nor would I let any church nearby survive. I was born into an orthodox Hindu family. I joined an extremist Hindu group and my life's main goal was to catch Christians and beat them up. One day, I met a man and he asked me, why are you doing this? Why are you attacking people who have not done anything to you? And he gave me a New Testament and said, why don't you read it? I started reading the New Testament and then Almost every day I wanted to read that book. I saw how, how Jesus taught his disciples to pray and I learned to pray like that. And then one day I read, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? And it hit me. After that I secretly started meeting with the Christians and learning from them. My village discovered I'd become a Christian and they tried to throw me out. They separated from me and said, we will not give you water to drink and we will not associate with you. It's, uh, it's been more than 20 years and I am still separated from some of my village, but now out of 30 families living here, 22 families have come to know Jesus. And I pray that one day it will become an entirely Christian village. I also now oversee 150 small groups in my region. I know that following the Lord is not easy. I've suffered persecution and had terrible things done to me, but in all of that, I, I have hope. The Lord Jesus came into my life, taking me from persecution to praise. He's everything to me. He is life. I pray that I will be able to complete the vision that, that God has given me to reach out to as many people as I can. Let's continue our worship now by singing our next hymn. 
above all powers. It's harvest time, so let us pray for others. Let's pray our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Generous God, at this harvest time, we thank you for all the good things that you give us. As we thank you for our food, we remember all those who do not have enough for even one proper meal each day. Lord, bless all those who suffer because of the greed of others. We pray for the homeless and for those who depend on the charity of others. 
We pray for the work of our local food banks, providing food for those in need. Help us to share the harvest of the world more fairly, so everyone can be fed and there will be no more starvation. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, protect and prepare our food. For the shopkeepers, the few lorry drivers we have left, the processors and of course the farmers. Bless all those, Lord, who do not earn a fair day's pay for their hard work, both at home and in other countries. Help us to want to buy local produce and fairly traded goods, supporting fair trade wherever we can, so that everyone can work with dignity and there will be no more poverty. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time we thank you for the world we see around us, for the flowers, the trees and the animals. Bless all those who care for them, Lord. Help us to protect your creation by being careful about how we use your resources, so that there will be clean water, clean air and plenty of wild birds, mammals and insects to maintain the ecological balance of our countryside. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all that is good in your creation and all who bring in the harvest of the sea and the land. We are conscious of so much that we get wrong. So we give thanks to you for your grace and patience with us. When we fail to look after your world as we should. Lord, help us to change so that we too become a new creation, walking in the light of your gospel. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. At this harvest time, we ask for your blessing on our families, friends and neighbours, and on those who are sick. We pray for those whose lives have been gathered into your presence, whose work here is done. Help us to recognise the interdependence of all of life and the importance of just relations and community and help us to become good stewards of all you continue to give us. Lord of the harvest, hear our prayer. Source of all life and giver of all that is good, hear our prayers and grant us all that is in accordance with your will. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Our final hymn for today is There is a Redeemer.
Our closing blessing on our Harvest Festival. Go in peace, go in joy, and go in love in the name of Christ. Amen.